So this is our first semi-organic object that we're painting for Evolve. This is assignment nine, a mushroom and a cone. And obviously it's not a real mushroom. I think it's like a ceramic or porcelain mushroom that they got and photographed, but it represents an organic object, right? So anyways, um, again, the same exact process. We trace the objects and then we um, fill in the base colors. We're still using dotted lines for gradients right now because in the earlier stages, the, uh, the instructors designed the course, or Kevin designed the course so that we're told where the gradients are using those dotted lines. But later on, they removed the dotted lines and we're on, on our own and we have to decide where the gradients are. But for now, they're still telling us, okay, there's a gradient here on the mushroom stem and then on the mushroom cap, and, um, but there isn't a gradient for that extreme shadow on the cone, et cetera, et cetera. Filling in the extreme shadows, then filling in the moderate shadows. Once we're done with that, then of course it's moderate lights and extreme lights. And I'm just going through this. You've already seen how this all works at this point, probably, if you've seen some of the other videos. And if you haven't, then basically the way this works is that we have only four shades to work with. We've got two shadows and two lights. We have extreme shadow and moderate shadow, extreme light and moderate light. And now I'm doing this. Um, gradient on the cone and it starts out it, this one's actually kind of tricky because the the gradient at the top of the cone gets really thin obviously and so I really should have used the number two paintbrush here um, especially doing that buffer going up but I just use the edge of my number six paintbrush oh well um, yeah so there's there's one gradient here we call this a form shadow so form shadow is when the light kind of bends around an object as opposed to a cast shadow, which is like that extreme shadow on the left of the cone where it's um, cast by an object that's blocking the light in front of the cone. In this case, it's the, this mushroom. And so the cast shadows always have sharp edges and the form shadows always have um, gradient graded edges. Now I'm doing the gradient on the mushroom cap, putting down a middle value between the light and the shadow and then blending the edges and this one's also tricky at the bottom of the cap because that's another very thin place. So you see how they increase the difficulty step by step? The earlier assignments that we did, the, we, we had to work on gradients um, straight up and down, and then we had to do curved gradients. And now we're doing gradients in a really tiny space. So they're con continually increasing the complexity, but not so much that we feel overwhelmed, but just enough so that we're constantly learning and pushing the boundaries on our abilities and our skills. So yeah, Kevin's really quite a genius um, course designer. <laughs> but I'm sure he had lots of practice with his in-person students before he designed this online course. So, And another thing too is that the reason why they call it Evolve Evolve is because the course is continually evolving with the students. I, um, By the time I jumped into this course, I think it had been already going on for maybe two, three years, maybe something like that, several years anyways. And they used to start out, I think, with a drawing module where people were using pencils instead of paint. And then they later figured out that it's actually much more effective to just start with paint right away. And so when I got into the program, they started with paint from our very first assignment. And basically the reason why Kevin chose the name Evolve, he says, is because he wants the program to evolve. Like as students go through it and he and the other instructors, they figure out like, oh, okay, actually teaching students this way is more effective than that way and so on and so forth. And they'll change the curriculum to be more and more effective. And so I'm really grateful that I got into this program when I did in terms of everything, timing in my own life and timing in the program's life. Like I actually, when I first got into this program or heard about it, I wasn't really all that into oil painting. I didn't know oil painters. I, my friends who did art, they're all digital artists. Um, one of my friends did do like AP art in high school, at which point she got into oils and she said that she really liked it, but that's about it. That's all I heard about oils. And I wasn't really into oils. I just wanted to learn how to, how to draw things. But then I realized that this Evolve program, even though the medium that they're using is, is oils, they're not just teaching you how to use oils. They're teaching you how to think like an artist, how to work like an artist. I, when you go through the program, once you've learned all the skills that they have to teach you, you can actually apply it to other mediums. At least that's what I've seen. Not just what they've said, but that's what a lot of the other students in the program have done. Some of the more advanced students, for example, they've gone into like animation and they've done digital art. And I don't know about like say watercolors or anything like that, but I'm not really interested in watercolors. 
I'm interested a little bit in digital art, but mostly I just wanted to learn how to how to see things like an artist and how to um, draw, I guess. And even though oil painting is not the same thing as what I thought of as drawing in the past, now I realize that the things that I'm learning in Evolve are very, very much needed and very necessary for drawing because you have to understand things like edges and shadows, whether it's a form shadow or a cast shadow, you have to understand things like gradients, you know, and even though we're only in black and white right now, I have learned so, so much from this program. So I can't wait to see where the rest of this takes me. And okay, putting in that final gradient on the bottom of the mushroom and cleaning up the edge of that cone and its shadow. And then the, those are basically the main elements of the painting. The rest that's left to do after cleaning this up is filling in the background with that extreme shadow slash moderate shadow um, background image and making sure that I don't mess up my nice straight line on this mushroom cap. And there we go, that's the final result that you can see flickering on the screen, filling in that um, admixture background. <laughs> make sure it all is clean and clear. So as usual, um, this is just a very brief summary of everything I did, my thought process, etc., etc. If you want to hear more about how this particular process for this um, painting went, feel free to check out the blog at it's bit.ly slash skyart, S-C-Y-A-R-T, and I will see you in the next video.